Hey everybody, this is Three Questions with my buddy, Mike Mohammed. Gotta sit through the music, man. Mike, it is awesome to see you, man. And just uh, just good to hang out. I, I've been to Elmbrook, where you're at. I know um, you're pretty revered there. Pretty famous in Elmbrook, right? Like... Uh, I guess, you know, I, I, I'm a known quantity, I think. You are. Uh, I, sure. I don't know about famous, but. Um, well, I knew, I knew, I, like, I have known you for a while before I came out there, and it's good to connect, and I know uh, several of your staff, and a really great district, and Mike teaches, actually, uh, science, which, you know, I'm fascinated to talk to you, just kind of, because, uh, personally, that was, like, my most hated subject, <laughs> And uh, I'm just curious, you know, like how you connect with kids, but we'll talk, we're going to talk about that on our other podcast. Uh, and I know that a lot of people look up to you. A lot of people kind of revere the, the, what, the work that you do in education. And we're going to talk a lot about you, kind of your year and how that's been going. So when you look back at your, you know, career as an educator, you know, even as a student, when you think of a teacher, who's a teacher that inspired you and why? Well, I would probably say there are really I can think of two teachers that really inspired me and both happen to be English teachers. Mm -hmm. I actually when I started um, on my course to secondary education I thought it was going to be English ended up being science but mm -hmm. that's kind of a longer story. Um, in terms of those two teachers uh, one is Mr. Valrath my eighth grade science uh, eighth grade English teacher and right. I think one of the he was one of those people that really could connect with you personally and taught me all about the great movies of the past but really I think the one thing that he really got me to connect with is bringing out some of my creativity and mm -hmm. I'm a terrible speller and I hated spelling tests and every week we'd have a spelling test but what he allowed for he kind of realized that at some point okay spelling isn't the big deal yes. um, understanding and using these words are great so he gave me the opportunity all right if you write a story with all these spelling words in them I'll give you the credit for it. So what I ended up doing, you know, it, it really brought up my creativity and I would write these stories every week that would actually include every single person in our class of 28 students. So <laughs> I'd write a story of something that we did, some magical trip yeah. that we took and try to build in every single person in the class and every single word in the class. So I think that really, um, you know, got me to see, oh, school is a place where I can be a little bit more creative. But to mm. see a teacher give that trust in you Yep. And, you know, I don't want to say you let me skirt a test or anything like that, but seeing that, oh, okay, he, he can get it a different way. And that's really one of my key philosophies as a teacher. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, um, in high school, I had an a English teacher, and I was, I'm, I'm a very um, good student about following the rules and mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, Ms. Krepsky, she was... Um, probably one of the toughest teachers in the school, older teacher, and, you know, very strict, and, you know, students didn't really care for her, and um, one time she was going away to a funeral, and she asked me if I would teach the class, you know, um, uh. and that uh, that um, faith in a student to actually do that, and then, of course, there was another teacher sitting in the back, she said, well, he's just gonna, he's just gonna watch and observe the class, and basically letting me teach, and you know, it's not like I ended up getting an A in that class. I ended up getting an A minus, which was the highest grade in the class, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, the idea that a teacher would see something in me, and I think that's going to apply to definitely other people in my career who've seen something in me that maybe I didn't mm -hmm. see myself, that I could play a role that I never thought for my own. And so. it's interesting, I was like, as I'm listening to you and thinking, you know, how great you are as a science teacher. And so I just assumed you'd say like, oh, there is a science teacher that got me into science, right? And then I was thinking like probably some of my favorite teachers were actually science teachers, which, and <laughs> no, like no offense, I hated the subject still, right? And, and like, it, it don't, don't get mad at me stuff. There's stuff that we all do that, you know, we don't like in school and things like that, but it shows how important that connection is and, and kind of seeing that. So like, shout out to your English teachers for making you a science teacher. <laughs> There you go. All right. So I, I love, I love those. You actually kind of did a segue, right? Cause you talked about how a lot of those teachers actually saw something in you, um, you know, that brought it out. So like, obviously great administrators do that. So when you think about a really great administrator, who's, who's someone you think of off the top of your head? Yeah. I'm a long time listener, first time guest. So, so I know these questions. Um, you know, I think 
It's the easiest um, way to do this, right? So I don't have to think each yes. week, right? I just like saying yep. three questions. Yeah, it's like the teacher who posts the questions on the boat on the wall before the test, you know, and you have some students who don't even bother going up and reading them. I, I'm the one who goes up there, reads them, writes them down, Good to know. my phone out. You no, know, I'm gonna I should have I'm gonna throw you know what? Third question, I might be I might be just do a random one. Uh oh. Just okay. to throw you off. All right. So I you know, it's one of those things that um uh this is my second school district I've been teaching mm -hmm. and in my first district. Um, it wasn't really the most positive experience and this district has really just changed the way I taught and it has to be um, Don Labonte who um, at some point um, called me into his office and said oh you know um, there's this Marzano Institute um, workshop going on and I can send two teachers would you be mm -hmm. and I thought about you and would you like to be one of them and I was like yes yes that'd be great, you know, not really knowing much about um, anything at all about the art and science of teaching or anything like that, but the second I got in there mm. and started um, hearing um, the ideas and the philosophies being put forward in terms of, cons of instruction, I was like, oh my gosh, this is me, this is what I believe in, mm. and um, my vision for my classroom, and somehow um, this administrator who we really did connect on different um, avenues. He actually, um, when I applied for the job, he saw my email address back at the time was um, Mike Muhammad at davidboy.com and he loves David Bowie too. And I don't oh. want to say that's the reason I got the job, but you know, it's one of the ways we were able to connect were outside of the classroom. But for him, as someone who I didn't see as someone who was always in my classroom watching me teach, that he actually understood this about me and pushed me and let me know that this method of instruction that I was trying out was good and mm -hmm. something to aspire for towards um, was really encouraging. It, it, like, and I'm sure people have had, you know, because we, we I, like when we talk, we're always talking about the things that are, are great. And I think part of the reason that I do this is not only um, to, you know, share these stories, I think of really inspiring men, but hopefully I know a lot of administrators listen to this as well. But I know I've, I've you know, maybe seen and felt the opposite and i hope you know i've tried my best i'm sure at some point i was that to somebody where you know they didn't felt that they were recognized for their strengths they didn't feel that they're recognized and i think you know the, the thing that we do in teaching and the thing that we do in leadership um that is really synchronous with one another is that the the job is about elevating it's about lifting people up right and i think sometimes um, because of the minutia minutia of the work we can sometimes get lost in that and forget like we're really serving people. So is it Don, is it Don Labonte? Don Labonte. And he, is he not, is he still there? No, he is not there. He's been gone for a few years now. Like I recognize like the name. So Don, yeah. if you're yeah. listening, <laughs> you got the shout out, you got the shout out from, from Mike here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna throw you a third question, but we're gonna, uh -oh. we're gonna jump now. What's, so tell me like, I'm going to give you that actual question, but I'm going to, okay. we're going to do it. We're going to do a two B question. Okay. All right. David Bowie. Like mm -hmm. who's, what's your favorite David Bowie song? Uh, my favorite David Bowie song. Now it's a, uh, it's a rarity called conversation piece. Hey. It was one of the, his first um, off of his, I don't want to say his, his, not his first actual album, but his first um, probably most popular album. Right. That once he was actually, it's called space oddity. Um, around that time, he recorded mm -hmm. a song called Conversation Piece that I really, really like. But again, I like just about everything he's ever recorded, even the stuff that people don't like. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not like a, there's like a, there's kind of the 70s David Bowie. Mm -hmm. And then there's yes. like the 80s, like modern love David Bowie. Yes. yes. That's, my, that's like, the, that's my David that's like Bowie. The, yeah, that's like the good one that Let's um, Dance album is like the one good 80s album. There's a couple of 80s albums after that, like no, Labyrinth good. stuff and oh, yeah. some other stuff yeah, that, that people don't revere as much. And I forget, let's, oh, That's the same Let's Dance is on that too, right? Let's Dance, yes. Let's Dance, uh, China Girl, and uh, Modern Love. Yep, all on there. David Bowie. Yes, David Bowie. <laughs> So, you know, big uh, influence uh, in my musical does like, okay, I know this is, the, uh, 
Do you did you nope. did you ever get Friday night videos? Do you know that? Yes, I know Friday night videos 100%. We did not have um cable television growing up in my house, mm-hmm. so we did not have MTV, so we would That was M- for NBC, Friday right? Videos. Friday night videos. Mm-hmm. NBC, yep. First Friday video videos. first video I ever saw, Duran Duran Hungry Like the Wolf. That is the They played uh, it all is, the time on Friday night yes, videos. All the time. I, <laughs> that is one of the first videos that I ever remember seeing and it was one of those that's like it like blew my mind cuz I love Indiana Jones. And I was like, oh my gosh, Indiana good. Jones. And yeah. Here comes show Friday Night Videos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. The actual last question. So you've had, right. you've had some, you know, great English teachers, great, great administrators. Um, you, you are very well respected in the field, in the, in what you do. So there's, you even said that you even struggle as uh, maybe a little bit at part of your career. So when you look back mm-hmm. at the beginning of your career as a teacher, what advice would you give to yourself? I think the biggest thing is don't live in a silo. Mm-hmm. I, I was, you know, the, that working so hard as a first year teacher and coming out of college, you feel like, oh, I've got these ideas. I can do this myself. I know what I'm doing. And you just put your head down and just, I just put my head down mm-hmm. and worked and didn't take the time to connect with other staff or really seek the help that I definitely needed definitely needed that help you know you Mm -hmm. think after these methods classes you are good to go i had some wonderful student teaching experiences but really when you are there all the time in a new district um, with different people around you people wanted to support me but um, i felt like i could do it all on my own Mm -hmm. and i really couldn't you know you know i'm listening to you and something kind of triggered my memory about my you know first couple first couple years and uh I, I was uh, I I was very kind of social, and then I kind of went off on my own. Like would stay out of the staff room, things like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was new to the community, things like that. And I was like, I was struggling, and it, it was actually someone who who basically came and got me out of there too. So I think you know, as a new teacher, like it's great that we do that, but I think that it, there can be an intimidation factor as well. Um, new staff, new job, like life changes. So, you know, to the veteran teachers out there too, if you're seeing that, make sure you're reaching out because I think a lot of people, we assume they're fine because of their demeanor, things like that, but it's always good to check in on one another, right? Because like teaching is this profession where we basically sometimes, um, you know, basically play this emotional tax, right? Like we're kind of always on, we, you know, like, I don't know about you, but like I would, I never swore in front of students, but after school i like it's like it just it was all swears right like it was just like repressed all day and so i I, you know like i think a lot of that we're kind of like holding in because we're around kids all day and i understand that and so you know just make sure we check in on each other so mike it's awesome to uh talk to you i wish i had like a good david bowie song but then i'll get copyright strike on youtube so so i don't know even if you hum it we're gonna be in trouble so we're gonna have to do the outro music but Make sure you give Mike a follow on uh, Twitter. And uh, Mike, thanks for being here. Thank you. Got to dance, Mike. Got a little David Bowie dance. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Have a great day.